All right, Miros, we are back. Dave Fisher's Powerhouse, and you have a lot on your mind yet again. <laughs> I love this show, man. Yes. People say they could listen to you talk for hours. So what do you got? Uh, okay, what do I have a subject? It's gonna go uh, on the continuance from the uh, last uh, interview, and then something happened with the J as well, right? Uh, when I talk about the protein intake, there are many guys that are saying, but Milos, everybody knows, there's so many studies, you can only absorb and assimilate 30 grams of protein per meal, right? And then here comes the J and said like he had 100 grams per meal and I had this all, all my life. And uh, there was, oh, no, no, but this study or that study. So let me just, you know, uh, cut it, cut the chase. You can absorb absolutely every gram you take. So I'm going to say this again. Absolutely every gram, it's impossible not to. Pay attention. So how much you're going to absorb it? You're going to take any meat, eggs, whey protein, da, 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 whatever else. You're going to chew it, mechanically digest it. It's going to go to your stomach. We start chemical digestion, right? First is going to be pepsin and hydrochloric acid. It's going to break down to the polypeptides. Now it's going to go to small intestine, so duodenum, right? Now pancreatic enzymes come, trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxyl peptidase. I'm not going to burden you with the, with the names of enzymes, but now these enzymes are going to break it down into the smaller peptides. And those smaller peptides, smaller peptides can be 2D ditripeptides, tripeptides, or free form amino acids. So once they come into the bloodstream, right, they're going to be available as a nutrient. So how can you not absorb them? Now everything is absorbed. It's gonna go first to liver, to manufacture whatever proteins, or it's gonna be transported to the muscle for protein synthesis. Here is where it comes. You know, a few studies that came about that it's impossible to synthesize more muscle protein. So I'm gonna to say to all these uh, nerds, they go on uh, research and you know, telling me all that, so, but this study and that study, I say, okay, Study is done on whom? Elderly women that do not exercise. Or teenagers, they are computer game specialists, or whatever. Show me one study where Kai Green, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, Big Ramy were used as examples to see how much protein can be synthesized, right? Number one, all these amino acids are not going just to muscle. That's a muscle protein synthesis. All the chemical structures, enzymes, hormones, you know, structural proteins, whatever, organs, tissues are made out of proteins. So now when we have a pool of amino acids, it can go to physiological needs, whatever needs to be made, or muscle protein synthesis. Now we bodybuilders are not average Joe Blows that sit at the house and you know, play video games or, or watch TV. We train, we break down the muscle, we create uh, possibility for uh, protein, increased protein synthesis and hypertrophy. So how much protein can we really synthesize? So I also, you know, read some studies back in the day and my father was a psychiatrist, doctor, and you know, so, really, so he says it's inconclusive, we don't know. But you know, you should maybe start with the RDA, recommended daily allowance, 0 0.36 grams of protein per pound. <laughs> Shoot me. What can you do with that? And what is this minimal, optimal, or maximal uh, amount needed to manufacture that great physique of Jay Cutler back in the day? And, and you know, Jay said himself, he was taking four, five hundred grams of protein daily. So I started increasing, and I it was my own first guinea pig. So when I was eating 200, 250 grams of protein a day, you know, something happened, but not much. And then I started increasing and increasing. And I, I went as far as five grams per kilo. So that's like two and a half uh, grams per pound. And uh, usually when I was training all these people in recent years, uh, I would tell them, okay, you know, I, I average between 450 and 500 grams of protein a day, and I was improving. Every time when I tried, okay, let me test it and drop it a little bit, I would lose size. It was wow. eminently, like, it's absolutely. So I had a few guys, okay, I'm going to mention one is, uh, you know, also much into research, Andy Bell, he's from Australia. So I so, said, okay, you know, why stop at five? He wanted to go to six grams. And with six grams per kilo, he improved the most. That was his most dramatic improvement. Wow. So I'm not the expert right now to tell you 
we all need to eat that much protein. But when I hear all these uh, you know, people saying, no, no, uh, one gram, one and a half, two point, whatever, you start increasing protein. Like I said the last time, I would give one gram per pound to every human being. I would go two grams per pound for any athlete that is uh, you know, doing weight resistance training. And maybe hard gainers or somebody that really wanna push the limits, be an XJ Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, Big Ramy, you know, you can e even increase it. So let's see a downfall. What's gonna happen if you have a too much protein? Because, you know, some people, oh, it's so you know toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, toxic for the kidneys. Yeah. For a healthy individual, uh, it's just gonna be, uh, you know, fleshed out. You know, whatever not used. But now, protein can be used, how? As a building material or as an energy? And everybody knows that, you know, there's 18 out of 20 of those amino acids that are glycogenic, can be converted into glucose. So many, again, experts would say, why would I take this expensive protein and burn it as energy? Well, do you know it's gonna be burned as energy? Because in the last episode when I talk about how you structure your diet, if you have enough energy material, either fat or carbs, carbs if you're gonna train, if you have enough carbs, why would body convert you know, amino acids into the uh, glucose and burn it. Why? It yeah. There is no way. You know, so the postulations, I assume that's going to happen, but amino acids are most valuable. It can be, you know, structured somewhere. There's so many proteins that need to, need to be manufactured. Protein means most important. I don't know if it's Greek or Latin. I think it was Greek, uh, but it's most important nutrient. The only building nutrient. Carbohydrates and fat are just energy nutrients. So let's stop with this nonsense research. Uh, show me the research when they have a top NPC competitor for a prolonged period of time. Not a uh, you know, single day doing uh, three sets of leg extensions or you know, doing a ping pong. You know, seriously, you know, stop doing this. You know, you know, if you want to fund the study, you know, get the top 10 Olympia competitors and see what is going to happen with them. Now, uh, to go back on uh, you know, protein and, and amino acids. You understand there is uh, uh, essential amino acids and non-essential. So when you take all these proteins and vegetarians, vegans uh, all, always caution, you don't have sufficient amount of complete protein, which means not enough essential amino acids for all the physiological needs. So you would need to add essential aminos. Non-essential can be manufactured in the body, right? So if you lack you know, some of them, the body's gonna produce it. But I would insist on what? High essential amino acid uh, uh, usage. Now, if you uh, pay attention when I said on digestion, if you take any protein, you're gonna have to break it down to polypeptides, larger peptides, smaller peptides, free form aminos. But if you take a free form essential amino acids, you already have a, your eight or nine diamonds if histidine is uh, considered. So now let's talk about uh, you know that protein synthesis, how that works. You always have a you know from a nucleus, you know the information. You have this uh, RNA messenger, even nucleic acid that goes out now, which which is trans transcribed. I don't want to confuse you and say big words, but you have a code. Yet now it has to be matched with transport to the nucleic acid. And whatever protein, that is gonna bring whatever amino acid. And they pair it three by three, and this amino, this amino, this amino, you, you create peptides. If my hair needs to be made, or my muscle, there's always transcribed what body needs. Bodybuilders, we are sending the messengers to build the muscle. We are you know, making that demand. So how much protein do we really need? I went with uh, five grams per kilo. All my 15 years of professional career. I have a zero kidney issues. I don't have a, any you know, fluctuations in my uh, health, even though last time when I was talking, everybody assumed that we were gonna die any moment. <laughs> <Those> <laughs> and I'm uh, sweating, yes. My we're shooting before this time. We, we learned from our mistakes. <laughs> yes, yes. But, but this, is, this is really how it is. And I'm glad that uh, uh, Jay talked about it. And uh, I think you said that, uh, you know, somebody complained, like, how can you digest and assimilate and absorb all these uh, 100 grams in one sitting? I don't know what Jay said. He said he's done that his whole entire career, just like you said. He says that's the way he's done it, and he never really thought about it. Yes. Until I started counting for him, you know, but he said, well, that's always the breakfast I've always had, and that's just the way I've done it. It is. Now, so. 
And I saw somebody back in uh, 1994, I remember him. I, I mean, you heard the story, he came to my house, he saw my journals. And one of the things that, that he noticed right away, because I would always uh, uh, do calculate how much protein, how much carbs and, and fat and calories. So he says, oh, you take 500 grams of protein, 550, why do you take so much? So I said, how much do you take? 250. Wow. And that's a uh, 94, if you remember, Nasser was, I think, seven or eight at the Olympia, it looked like a normal. It was uh, nothing special about it. Like 235. Or and maybe. then, you know, six months later, you could see, like, he started. So he doubled his protein, and he said, like, wow. you know, please, you're way too intelligent and way too educated. If uh, protein is the only building material in your body, how, how can you limit yourself to what the research told you, what scientists told you? Because the way I see it, really, this RDA, 0.36 grams per pound, 0 0.8 uh, grams per kilo, is essential amino acids, minimal amount for survival, survival for yeah. basic physiological needs. Yeah, yeah. So it's far away from optimal and you know miles away from maximal. Let, let me ask you this: If you have, if you boost your protein intake, I say from 300 to like 500, wouldn't you have to lower your carbs? Otherwise, you can't get fat. You have to be yes. careful. Yeah, yeah, you know that's a very good question. Now, okay. protein can be converted into a fat. It's very it's unlikely to happen. Yeah. It is, but the surplus of calories. Now, like you, if you are right now in a, in a maintenance calories, you you know take 5,000 calories and your uh, calorie expenditure is 5,000. And now you want to add 200 grams of protein that's extra 800 calories. Yeah, it's uh, you know more than likely wise to reduce your carbohydrates or fat. The same. Yeah. Now, protein has a high uh, thermic uh, uh, effect of feeding, right? About 30% 30, 30 of the calories are going to be burned you know, uh, itself. So if you take 100 calories worth, it's going to be uh, 70 calories that you're going to get, mm. you know, much less than carbs. So maybe you don't have to drop exactly 200 grams mm. of carbs, but 150. Okay, that's interesting. Very cool. Yeah. So it's really, uh, again, for everybody that's going to be asking your questions, I'm going to repeat one more time. Every gram of protein being taken is going to be, oh, they're going to say virtually every. You know, you're going to see this. You can confirm in your studies. You know, you know pretty much very little can be lost and some cannot be really fully digested, yes, but then you can add more pepsin, hydrochloric acid, you know, trypsin. You can add those digestive enzyme, enzymes that are gonna break down these polypeptides. But once you have those amino acids, fate of amino acids can be, you're a sedentary individual, you don't do nothing, they're not gonna be used for muscle protein synthesis. You don't give them a reasons to go there. If you stimulate the muscle, you create a need you know, now for protein synthesis, there was protein degradation, and that uh, I forgot to mention this. Yes, that is very true. There is a protein turnover. So it's not all the protein that you're eating today is going to be solely used for manufacturing new proteins. Some uh, recycled proteins, you know, some existing that are going to be breaking down, are going to be also used and paired. Somebody even says, the research says, the more that's going to be used is from uh, repaired new proteins. But uh, regardless, Jay was taking 500 grams of protein a day, I was taking 500, you know, many other people. Uh, uh, I'm much older than Jay, but I'm 55 years old, and I always say, like, I'm probably healthier than most of the uh, uh, guys my age. How many do you take today? Do you calculate still or not? I'm, I'm, still, uh, I'm taking about 350 okay. right now, yes, because my energy expenditure is far from, yeah. you know, before. Yeah, yeah. I'm training once a day, still not twice high. a day. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is high, but not just, I love protein. I yeah. mean. I love meat. I love my eggs. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. This is what I do all my life. And uh, there's a lot of people like uh, Kai Green. What did, what did he do? Like two pounds steak in one sitting. Crazy. I mean, I, I can't even imagine. But yeah, yeah, he managed it. He's not big for a reason. There yeah. <laughs> so that's about this. Again, let's clarify this. Absorption is 100 percent, or almost 100. And now utilization and what can go to the protein synthesis. Stop the nonsense of reading the studies, being a brainwashed and being told what to do. About do it yourself, shot. experiment yeah. for yourself. Push the protein, I went from one gram to two grams to two, two and a half, three, and went all the way up to five. Once I was at uh, four to five grams per kilo, I made my greatest gains. So oh. can I convince myself to lower it? No, I couldn't. And few times that I did when I was traveling and uh, you know, maybe just like, okay, let me rest. I don't need to rest my renal and hepatic system and whatever, cardiovascular, bullshit. You're training, you're healthy, 
you uh, expand all this uh, energy, you create caloric requirement that is needed, you have this much for energy, but you have this much for building. If your goal is hypertrophy, getting a bigger house, not small, you want a big mansion, you need a protein, as mm -hmm. simple as that. Those are the bricks that are gonna build that big mansion. If you don't have enough, it doesn't matter if you have all the construction workers, technology, you don't have enough building material, your house, build your nothing. body is gonna be small. Yeah, you build nothing. Yeah. Thanks, That's it for today. Awesome.